you think of the, um, uh, you know, Wall Street um, protests and so on, and they were talking about having a leaderless um, occupation, you know, that kind of thing. That was kind of his perspective or what he was trying to achieve in this artwork. There are, though, if you look, I mean, there's even rhythms of black, even rhythms of this brownish color, um, but there are like a little bit of interspersed um, reds which catch our eye. And again, that goes back to the primal thing with the blood. Um, so that's why we look at red. That's why we notice it. And then there's sort of this turquoise in a couple places. And then there's these white rifles, which really contrast with the black of the um, garments here. And so they, they are somewhat bringing your eye around. But because they repeat and they're of equal size, then we're calling this more of a balanced piece with repetition as opposed to having a strong focal point. So a focal point really is a tool artists are going to use when they use, they can use color, they can use line, they can use contrast, they can use a lot of different uh, elements and principles to get your eye to come to a specific place. And then that meaning of that work uh, is heightened. You get the sense on an intrinsic or subconscious level of the importance of where you're supposed to go in the artwork. Okay. Uh, so we're on this piece, the coronation of Virgin Mary, and this definitely has a focal point. Okay. So this is achieved in a few different ways. If we're going back to um, Renaissance painting, Renaissance painting. Um, most up until the Renaissance, previous to the Renaissance, painting was all religious, usually had figures in it. Um, when we get further into the 20th century, we start to de emphasize the figure and we get into the abstract expressionism, like we looked at the Agnes Martin piece. So things shift a lot and change a lot through history and um, trends and so on. And they do relate to, it's not just purely visual exploration, they do relate to concepts in the um, historical time or cultural place of, of that culture, okay? So here we are with Christianity. We want to focus on the coronation, the, the crowning, that's what coronation means, of the Virgin Mary. So there's a, a, a variety of things bringing us to that focal point, which is right, you know, her halo and her face. So perspective is used um, to some degree if we come down here like this, if we follow these lines like this, everything is receding uh, toward her, right? So perspective is used, one point perspective. Also a heavy contrast of this very bright white here with a uh, darker color or even bright color, it doesn't matter, but there's white area, halo. Also the eyes are going there. Eyes are a line. You gotta think about it that way. Where the eyes are looking, those are considered an implied line, okay? The other thing you wanna think about are arrows. Arrows are another thing and her hands are forming a triangle pointing to her face. Hands also count, this hand also is pointing toward her, hands count as an arrow or another implied line, okay? So we have contrast, we have line, we have some perspective going on here. Now this is northern uh, Europe, so we don't get a really proper uh, one-point perspective in the way that we would in Italy and, and so on. They, they have a stronger sense of perspective, <clears throat> excuse me, and they follow the rules a little bit more. Uh, at any rate, the other part that we would have is this uh, this contrast right here with her flesh to this dark, dark uh, blue robe that she's wearing. That is the strongest contrast in the entire composition, okay? And uh, lastly, she's central, right? Central and large. The angels are smaller. These two gentlemen are important as well. Um, so we want to think about... Um, that, but she is the, the center figure that always is the most important, and um, she's larger than the angels, so our eyes are going to go toward her, and that is hierarchical scale, okay? So scale, she's larger than the other figures, except for these two guys, because they're also important, just keep that in mind. Okay. Oh yes, in the Holy Trinity, the three, that's what I forgot to mention, there's one more thing, the triangle. 
So the triangle, um, if you look at this, there's a triangle there. And of course, her hands are a triangle. Her figure, herself, she's in a triangle. The triangle is really big in Renaissance art for the Holy Trinity. Okay, Icarus. So Icarus is a focal point in this painting. And if we go back to what I just said about the largeness and the scale of figures, he is the largest uh, thing in the figures. Now, here we are in the 20th century, 1975. Chagall, um, this is toward the end of his life. He's, he uh, began his artwork much earlier than this. So we have a more abstracted piece, right? It's not realistic, but it's abstracted. We have figures in it. We have a focal point. Our figure here is on, on fire. Red is also something drawing our attention. But look how large he is. He's central, sort of. He's central and up high, but he's in a blank area where there's just sky. So there's contrast, there's a largeness, and he's central. Okay. The other figures are smaller. So the fall of Icarus is really important. We're focused on what is happening in the story. So we want to know... Um, about the story of Icarus who put wings on with wax uh, feathers and wax and he flew too close to the sun the wax melted and he fell so this has a little bit to do with um, bragging or um, when you say flew cl too close to the sun you were being too uh, prideful and too arrogant and you decided that you were as equal to the sun or you wanted to be more like God, and then the sun melted your feathers and you fell. So that's that story. It's a Greek mythology story, beautiful story. You should look it up. Uh, when we look at um, another version of this story, it took me a while to find Icarus, okay? So what's happening here is subordination. We are not focused on Icarus, even though that's the title of the painting and that's what's happening in this painting. And the reason for that is, is because um, for the Dutch and in this period of time specifically, um, and we are in, we are in the Renaissance uh, era, but we're saying that the common person who is in red, who is large, who is central, uh, he is more important than some um, prideful person who decided to do something foolish and fell in the water and died. Okay. Also, there's a Flemish proverb here on page 161. It says, no plant, no plow, and this guy's plowing his fields, stands still because a man dies. Okay. So work must go on. The world must go on in the real world. Um, we're not that concerned over some fool that died. So he's de-emphasizing it, and he's focusing on the common man. So he is telling a story here by not showing you Icarus as opposed to Mr. Chagall. Okay? I'm going to stop there.